make the word relevant to the entire house. And so, uh, mothers, I'm going to speak to you a little bit, and then I'm going to speak so that everyone, praise God, will receive something from God today. And so when I was looking at this text, when, when Deborah was talking to Barak, and, 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 and the word that just kept sticking out in my spirit was, get up. Mm. Get up. And that's what I want to share with you today. Get up. I don't know what's got you down. I don't know what's got you oppressed. But I want to tell you today to get up. Because in this particular text, what was happening was King Jabin was oppressing the children of Israel. He had his foot on their neck and he was oppressing them and he was abusing them and he had them down. But, but they went to God and they began to pray. We got to understand today that there are some things that we can handle on our own, but then there's some things we cannot do without God. We got to understand when is that time for us to submit all of our issues, all of our cares, all of our burdens. We got to give it to God and say, listen, God, I need your help. I, I, I'm down, Lord. I, I, I'm at this place where, where I just feel like I, I, I'm defeated in this position, and God, I can't The children of Israel, they cried out to God for help. They, they needed God to help them out of this situation. They needed God to lift up their burdens and to fix the situation that was a mess. And so what God did was he chose a woman named Deborah. Deborah was a, a woman of wisdom. Deborah, she was a one, woman that, that, that had much knowledge and information. And, and I want you to understand today that there's a difference between having knowledge and information and experience and having wisdom. See, you can have a bunch of knowledge and a bunch of information because you're, you're able to read and you're able to search out Google and all these things. But if you don't know how to uh, properly, properly apply what it is that you know, you don't have no wisdom. You just got a bunch of information. And so we see that Deborah was a woman of great wisdom. And as a result of her being a woman of great wisdom, they put her in a position of authority where she was now a judge that was able to sit up above the people and help them to make decisions and to help uh, uh, rightly uh, uh, give out and provide justice when situations was occurring. And I want to say today that we got a lot of mothers that got a whole lot of experience with life. They've they, they gone through a lot of things that have qualified them to instruct us on the things of this life. But, but it's a blessing to have a mother that has some wisdom, that, that knows when to share and when to say and how to say and how to give directives. And if you have a mother that's full of wisdom today, you got to be grateful unto God because she's a precious jewel that cannot be replaced. And, and, and so Deborah, Deborah, the thing I, I was blessed about Deborah is that, that, that the Bible says that Deborah sat up under the palm tree and she waited for the people to come to her before she gave them advice. As mothers, sometimes we, you know, we love our kids and we, we want what's best for our children and we want to make sure they don't fall and make the same mistakes that we made. And, and, and you know, your mother, she cares about you. She don't really mean to be all up in your business. It's just that she doesn't want you to make the same mistakes she made. She don't want you to hurt the way she hurt. She don't want you to go without like she had to go without. But 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 but, but Deborah teaches us that sometimes as mothers we just gotta sit up under the palm tree and wait until our children comes and asks for that advice before we so you know generously gives it out without you know them asking for God. So if you got a mother today that you know she just always giving you advice that you ain't asked for just you know, bear with her. She just loved you. She just want what's best for you. And so the text says that Deborah, she would sit up under the palm tree and she would wait for those to come to her that needed wisdom. And the Bible says that as the children of Israel were praying, God spoke to Deborah. And, and Deborah said, go and get Barak. She sent for him. And the Bible says that he came to her and, 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 and she said, Barak, this is what I want you to do because God told me that he is going to, to help us overcome the king of, uh, 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 of Jabin. And I hope I'm saying his name right. Praise God. Let me go back over here to my notes here real quick. I think his name was Jabin. But, but Jabin had a, he had a man that was over his army. And that man said, yeah, it was King Jabin. And, and the man that was over the army was named was Sisera. And so, so she was letting him know, listen, God is going to give King Jabin into our hands. And God is going to use you. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and get 10,000 soldiers so that you can go and fight. 
now, now, uh, uh, Barry didn't say, now look, honey, first of all, let me help you uh, because, you know, uh, King James got uh, 90,000 uh, mm -hmm, uh, iron chariots and you want me to go get 10,000 men to fight up against some iron, let me take the picture now, they got horses that's carrying a chariot that's of iron that we got to get through before we can get to them and you want me to go get some regular men, 10,000 of them, to go fight up against 90,000 men that's going to be on some iron uh, yeah. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He, he just said, okay, um, I recognize that, 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 that Deborah is a woman with much knowledge. I, I recognize that, that Deborah is a woman of great wisdom, but, but, but most importantly, I, I recognize that God speaks to Deborah. And she said that God said. And because she said that God said, I'm going to listen to what she has to say. Now, now, if you got a mother today that, that, that has a relationship with the Lord, now you got to learn how to sometimes, you know, like uh, what mama's saying really ain't making sense to me, but if she got a connection with the Father, you got to learn how to be like Barrett and learn how to just listen and follow the instructions. And so the Bible says that Barrett got up from where he was and he went to do exactly what it was that Deborah told him to do. He went and he pursued and he got the 10,000 men. But, but, but the text says that before he went and got up to do that, he said to her, he said, listen, Deborah, listen. Listen, Deborah, if, if you want me to go and, and, and take 10,000 men and fight these 90,000 men with these iron chariots, guess what? You're going to have to go with me. So Deborah said, all right, absolutely, I'll go. Mothers, let me help you right there. You know, we can't keep telling our kids to do what I say and not what I do. We, we got to be examples. We got to lead them where we want them to follow. And if we want them to follow Christ, then we got to follow Christ. If we want them to live holy, we got to live holy. If we want them to be able to live as, as productive citizens, we got to live as productive citizens. Don't you be at home on no Sunday morning and send your child to church. No, boy. Yes. And so Deborah, Deborah got up and, and she got herself ready to go into battle. And, and the Bible says that, 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 that God told her that, that, that to tell him, now wait a minute, I want to tell you something, Derek, because I don't want your ego to get in the way. I want to help you that when we get down there and when we begin to fight uh, in this here battle, God's going to give you the victory. But I want you to understand something, that, 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 that Sisera, the one that's in charge of the armor, army, God is going to set it up so that a woman is going to take him out. So I don't want your ego to get in the way now. You're going to lead the battle. You're going to be in charge. But a woman is going to do the work. <laughs> I want y'all to understand something. See, see, sometimes we get caught up on who's doing the work. But you need to be caught on the results. If the result is that we're going to all win and we're all going to be successful, who cares who's doing the work, who's doing the groundwork? The end result is that we all win. And so in the body of Christ, we need to stop looking at individuals and stop looking at personalities and start wondering, am I being blessed as a result of what God is doing? Make that your primary focus. Am I being blessed? And so, and so you know, Barry said, you know, okay, that's cool. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's just get this thing going. And so the Bible says that they began to travel and they got up onto the Mount of Tabor. And see, you got to understand that as they were beginning to go, word got back to Sisera that they was coming for him. And so Sisera was like, oh yeah, we got this. Come on, let's get our iron uh, our chariots and let's get ready to go because they ain't even ready because we got the secret weapon. We got these iron chariots. See, we're not worried about nothing because all we got is this iron, and that's enough to keep them from killing us. And see, their confidence was in the iron chariots, but they didn't have no idea that they was coming against the hand of God. And they, they didn't understand that what they put their trust in had, had no ability to come up against the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so the Bible says that, 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 that they was preparing, and so as, 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 as Deborah and, and, and Barak was going up to the mountain, a tabor. Then, 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 then Cicero and all his guards was down in the valley. See, because you got to understand that that, that that thing that they was putting their trust in was limited. See, because it was a chariot. It only could function on a flat plain. It, it couldn't go up in the mountain, but everybody in this fight know that you have the advantage if you're on the mountaintop. If you're in the valley, you're at a disadvantage. And, and so they were so cocky and they were so confident putting their trust into these iron uh, uh, things that was limited in comparison to, to the ability of God. And so the Bible says that when they were up on Mount Tabor, then Deborah was listening.
listening closely to the voice of the Lord. And at the appropriate time, God gave the word and told him to get up and go forth. Now, now, when you look at this, it seems a little odd that they was in the right position. They was up on the mountain and the enemy was down in the valley. And, and after all those chariots that, that, that they had of iron, it couldn't function up on the mountain. So why would you go down to the valley, down there where the enemy was, where it's making it a level plain, when you're at an advantage up here on the mountain? Now, that don't make no sense. God, what are you talking about? Go down to the mountain. Let's wait for them to get up off of those iron chariots and walk up this mountain. And then by the time they get up here, they're going to be wore out from the journey and we're going to be able to whoop them. But God had another plan. God had another plan. And I want to say to you today that if you've been doing the same thing over and over again because it's logical, because it seems right, because it seems like it's the best thing to do, I want you to tell you today to get up and shift to your position. Get up and shift in your position. Because as long as you're in a position where you have the upper hand, then you are the one that's going to get the victory. Yes. But God is that type of God that he wants to get all the glory, that he wants all the praise to be given back to him. So he will put you in a position that will cause you to shift so that he gets the glory and not your flesh. And so the text tells us that, 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 that Deborah said to Barak, she said, no, it's time. It's time. Today is the day that God is going to hand Sisera into your hand. Today is the day that you got to get up and shift your position because God is about to work a mighty work in you. Today is the day. And I want to tell each and every one of you, every day that you get up in the morning, you got to tell yourself, today is the day that God is about to shift something in my life. Today is the day where oppression has me, but it's going to shift today. I was depressed on yesterday, but today it's going to shift. I don't care what it is that's going on in your life. you got to get up each and every day and make a declaration that today it's going to shift. It's going to shift. It's going to shift. And so, and so the Bible says that, that they was up on the mountain and, 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 and Barak made a, Barak made a decision that I'm going to shift in my position and I'm going to come from off this mountain and I'm going to go down into the valley where the enemy is. And the Bible says that, that at this particular moment, as soon as the voice of Deborah was spoken and, and Barak connected with the voice and decided to take action and move forward, he, he moved forward. He get up and move forward. I know you've already tried it before. I know the last time you tried it, it didn't work. I know the last time you said, you know what, I can do this, and you stepped off, and guess what, you fell. You fell down, and you messed up, and it didn't work, but baby, get up and do it again. Get up and do it again, because the Bible says you gotta forget those things that are behind, and you got to press toward the mark of the prize of a high calling. Don't let the enemy cause you to be stagnant and stay in position, because you're scared to get up and try again, baby. Get up, because God is with you this time. Get up, because this time God's going to give you the victory. Yeah. So the text says that, 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 that he got up and he began to go down into, uh, into the valley. And the word of the Lord says that at this time there was a supernatural thing that went on. Because see, what happened is while they had their trust into these iron chariots, God made it so the ground was very moist. And now what happened when iron hit some wet ground? <laughs> they began to what? Go down. Oh, God. And so the text says that as they was approaching, and, you know, they realized, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This thing that we've been trusting, uh, uh, wait a minute, uh, it's limited. We, we thought we was going to be conquered, conquer them because, you know, our confidence was in these iron. Uh, but, oh, I don't think this is going to work. And everybody began to scatter. And everybody got to be getting afraid. And the Bible says that Sisera, the, 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 the army's great champion, he got off of that thing that he was trusting to give him victory. And he began to run because he was afraid because that thing that he put in his trust in was limited. I, I, I don't know what you got your trust in today. Your, your, your job's not going to do it, boo. It's too limited, you know, because today your job is here. Tomorrow it might close down. Or, you know, tomorrow you might get your pink slip, boo. I, I know you got your sugar daddy, praise God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, say nothing, you know, because he's been taking real good care of you, praise Jesus. But baby, it's limited because his money can run out too. I don't know what it is that you got your trust in today, but I want to just stop by and tell you to say, get out, because you're trusting the wrong person. And you got to start trusting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The reason why you need to trust him is because God is the type of God that he can speak to the mountains in your life and he can cause that mountain to be moved. You got to understand that we serve the type of God that can speak to the winds and the rain and even then 
or have to obey. And if God is able to do it, all those things, you got to know that God will move whatever situation is oppressing you, whatever thing that's got you bound, whatever thing that's got you feeling like you can't make it, God can move it today. But you just got to get up and trust God. And so the text tells us that, you know, Sister got scared and he got to running because everybody Every single individual that was trusting in them iron chariots, they was murdered by the hands of the children of Israel because God was with them. And the Bible says that Sisera, he was running and he was running. And he came to this tent where this woman named Chell was there and she was like, come on in. I, I, I'm going to take you in. And see, the thing that, that, that tickled me about this text when I was studying is, number one, uh, I'm in a war and, you know, I'm getting my behind whoop and, uh, I don't think I'm going to ask somebody for permission because after all, he was a man and this was a woman. I think I would have just been like, look, I need to come get out the way because they're they coming for me. Protect, don't tell nobody I'm here. And I would have went on in. But see, 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 he understood that there was proper protocol even when he was running. See, see, some of us, some of us got this thing twisted, we think, because we are adults, we can do whatever we want, when we want, and there's no consequences to our actions. But baby, you got to understand that in life, all of us have some rules that we have to follow. I don't care how great you think you and wonderful you think you are. We have some rules that we got to follow. So, so he understood this. And so now he broke the rules after he, it didn't make sense. But yeah, at first he abided by the rule and he asked permission. She let him in. But the, but the text says that, that, that he asked two questions. He said, I'm thirsty. And he said, don't, listen, don't tell nobody I'm up in here, okay? If somebody asks you, I ain't here. You ain't seen me. But matter of fact, you don't even know who I am, okay? I'm going to have it now. Don't tell nobody. Now, now you gotta understand that, that, that during that day, you're not supposed to, number one, first of all, he would he was taken in by the wife and not the husband. And he should have been taken in by the husband, but the husband wasn't there. So if you're taken in by the wife, you're not supposed to ask for anything. That's the custom of the day. And so because of that, I, I believe the Lord shifted in jail and said, uh-uh, wait, 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 something ain't right, because he ain't following protocol. He he ain't, you know, he ain't following the custom. And so she gave him some milk and she put him to sleep. And after he went to sleep, the Bible says she went out and she got one of those uh, 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 nails that you, the tent that you put the tent up with, and she rammed it in his in his temple with a hammer, and she killed him. I said, "Oh God, uh, what you what you saying, Lord? This don't make sense." And he said, "All you got to do is get up. You got to get up." You got to trust me. You got to get up. You got to shift your focus. You got to get up. You got to keep moving forward. You got to get up, and then you got to get out the way. You got to get up, and then you got to get out the way. You got to get up, and then get out the way, because no matter what it is that's coming after you, that's trying to oppress you, that's trying to keep you down, that's trying to keep you from the will of God and the things that he's got for your life, all you got to do is get out the way, because Jesus is on the way. And when Jesus comes, that he's going to destroy everything that tries to rise itself up against what he has assigned for your life. All you got to do is understand that God is going to fight your battle for you. All you got to do is stand on the word of God and get out of God's way so he can do what it is he needs to do in your life. Yeah. Who am I talking to today? You got up, but you all in the way. God is saying, I'm trying to fix it for you, but you all in the way. Get out the way. Move. Get out the way. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but get out the way. <laughs> God is trying to do something in your life. He's trying to do something for you. He's trying to open up a door for you. He's trying to make a way for you. He's trying to give you miracles that you've never seen before. He's trying to put you before great men that he has their heart in his hand. He's turning which way he wants so that you can be blessed in your life. But you are all in the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. All of us are at some place in our life where we need something, God. It's real simple. Some of us has gotten to the place where we've been wanting this thing so long and we want it so hard that, that, that we we just like, man, this is ridiculous. I, I've been trying, I've been trying for so long and nothing is happening. And God is saying, get up and try again. Get up. Don't you let the devil have his foot on your neck. Not another day. Don't you be filled with discouragement. Not another day. I want you to get up. Shift your position from that position of thinking that you're able to do it on your own. You're only able to do it if I equip 
at you. If I'm operating in you, moving through you, then you can accomplish it. But if you keep on pushing me to the side and pushing me to the burden, like, God, I got it, God, I got it. I'm going to sit back. But the, the fact is, you're going to just keep hitting your head up against the wall. We got to get up. But we got to shift our position of thinking that we can handle it and allow the God of our salvation to work it out for us. If we just get up and get out the way. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's clap those hands. Yeah. You can stop recording.